Welcome back, everybody, to another battle featuring classical Southern Europe. In today's battle, we are looking at the naval Battle of Salamis, part of the larger Second Persian Invasion of Greece. And Salamis would be the final necessary naval victory for the Greek coalition troops to finally throw back the yoke of a Persian invasion. The battle would pit Euripides leading Athenian troops on the seas, leading the larger forces, including Themistocles and other Greek commanders, to finally defeat the Achaemenid Empire under Xerxes, Artemisia, Achaemenes, Ariabenes, and Damasthios. And there's no way I pronounce any of this correctly. So before I make a fool of myself by mispronouncing Greek names, let's get down to the battlefield. Welcome, everybody, to the Battle Seas of the Battle of Salamis. So this time we are playing as the victorious Greeks, ready to crush the Persian fleet. Now we are on a scale of... I gotta think about this. I believe 15 to 1? So the Persians come into this fight with 600 vessels, the Greeks 378. So you guys can run the math on that. But I believe it's 15 to 1. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because this is, you know, we're still outnumbered here, so I've got to be careful. But uh, here's my strategy. We are going to double envelop. What that means is, so typically on a battle, you know, armies face off in lines. So we've got their line of battle here. And normally I would make a line of battle directly facing them. To envelop an enemy means to send a force to hit your opponent from the side. And to double envelop means to attack from three sides. So the main line of battle plus both sides. And if you're wondering, if you attack from all angles, that's known as total envelopment or surrounding an enemy. So we are going to double envelop the Persian fleet with our smaller fleet. So what that's going to do is actually free me up. Uh, if I form up a normal battle line, I'm going to have to have two lines of ships. And having two lines of ships doesn't actually help me. I want to maximize the number of ships involved in the fighting. Because what that means is I can double team enemy vessels. Like you see, you know, a couple back here, but I could send ships, even though I have less of them, to double team these smaller vessels. And what I can do is hopefully sink a vessel with just hitting it once, but hitting it once with two ships each. And then I can rapidly just plow through the Persian fleet. Oh, oh good hit. And that's what I'm talking about. Get really good hits on these guys. And hitting them from the sides means I do more damage to the vessel than if I hit it from the front, like you see there. And coming at the enemy from multiple angles also affects the morale of the crews. When they feel like they might be getting surrounded... They will try to retreat. And that's all I need. I don't need to sink every ship. I just need to either sink or rout. And routing means to cause fear in your enemy that results in them running away. But I am already sinking a lot of vessels out there. And we are just plowing through this fleet. Oh, good hit. 
And yeah, you can see it. We're very easily knocking our way through the Persian fleet over here. Now they are kind of breaking apart at the center to move uh, about a third of their force to my right and two thirds to my left. You can see their vessels are actually doing pretty well over here because they are trying to kind of overwhelm individual ships to prevent those ships from being able to ram them. And that's a really good strategy. But I have enough ships kind of coming up behind that formation that is allowing me to kind of get really nice hits from the sides. Look at all these sick things. Ooh. Daily reminder, it's always a good idea to learn how to swim, everybody. Boat safety 101 is swim safety 101. Oh. We almost knocked it. Over, we almost capsized it. We continue to make our way through this Persian fleet, doing good work with these guys. You can hear the screams of burning sailors. I think that's this boat here. It's on fire. The cries of the wounded. We have more. Oh man, we've got another flaming boat over here. Oh my god, this is brutal. But I think here we may actually be. I'm not sure what's happening. I think we're actually trying to board the enemy flagship. By the way, almost none of the Persian ships survived this battle. And those that did were thanks to a Persian admiral named. Artemisia. Artemisia was uh, one of the earliest known warrior women in history. Uh, she was an admiral in the Achaemenid fleet. I believe she was also involved at the Battle of Artemisia, but she was involved at the Battle of Salamis. And when the battle turned against them, she managed to lead a breakout attempt to get out of the Athenian-led Greek coalition fleet surrounding the Persian forces. I managed to salvage a lot of the Persian fleet. Getting some nice hits on these guys. Oh my god, we're just wrecking them. Going in for another ramming. But we do, honestly, I, I mean, we're not, uh, we're not uh, immune out there. We do have a lot of ships that are on fire and are taking pretty intense casualties. So maybe Artemis, oh my god, oh, maybe this is Artemisia's boat right there. Oh, they just destroyed this vessel. We've got sailors flying. Now, that was one of the downsides to, you know, this era of the armor that would have been worn by Marines. Um, would have been pretty heavy. So if you were on a boat that did what that did, you know, went, went down, it would be difficult to prevent yourself from drowning with all that armor. Looks like this ship's beginning to list a little bit. But speaking of listing, look at this one. So listing, by the way, is a term for when a boat begins taking on water and starts to, like, tilt to one side. You know, like this. Oh, man, this is sinking so fast. This one is tilted to the left, as you can see, so you can call that listing to the left. Uh, but it is sinking because of how much water it took on. We've got another vessel that's in flames over here. But for the most part, it does appear as we've defeated the Persian fleet. They have a couple ships still in the fight. Looking to try to find an escape route. 
Got to give a quick shout out to our Patreon subscribers, the folks that have the list. If you guys are interested in joining our Patreon, you can head to the link in the video description below. Get signed up for one of several really cool tiers. Yeah, maybe this is Artemisia's boat right here. Because this is... This is the little engine that could right there. We are... Oh, we're hitting these crew hard with their javelins. They are routing now. And that might be the end of the battle. It might be the last... Uh, we got another one routing there, it looks like. That might be it. That might be the battle. So guys, if you liked this battle, feel free to hit the like button. If you want to see more battles from classical era Southern Europe, let me know in the comments below which battles you'd like to see. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our battle rematches, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Somebody got a hit in somewhere. Maybe somebody threw like a, a flaming pot of oil in. Not sure. Let me hit these guys on the side. And Artemisia's crew is getting hit hard. But it looks like she's going to get her boat out of there and uh, perhaps this other one. Maybe this is Artemisia's ship. They are on the. Looks like it might have been on fire, but I think they're fine. So a small number of Persian ships are going to escape. That was a good breakout attempt by those guys. They did a good job kind of sinking a couple of my vessels and managing to uh, get some of their crew out of there. So great job. And we will go ahead and end it there. So I will see you guys back in the war room. Greek coalition troops would end up losing 40 ships in this battle, but the losses for the Persian fleet range anywhere from 200 to 300 total ships. Again, because of the historiosity of this battle, it's hard to know exactly how many ships were involved and how many ships were lost for either of the two forces, but what we do know is the defeat was so total for the Persian navy that when combined with their defeat on land at the Battle of Plataea, the Achaemenid Empire would never again attempt to invade Greece. What did eventually result out of this battle was a rise in a uniqueness between Athens and Sparta, as Athens would continue to invest in their navy and Sparta would continue to invest in their army. Eventually, as these two strategies went head-to-head -head in the future Peloponnesian War, Persia would supply mercenaries in a twist of history to the Greek wars happening across the Aegean. But we'll see more of the Peloponnesian War in future videos. Until then, guys, I will see you on the next battlefield.